Come into his presence with thanksgiving in your heart and give him praise and give him praise. Come into his presence with thanksgiving in your heart. Your voice is raised, your voice is raised. Give glory. with thanksgiving your heart and give him praise and give him praise come into his presence with thanksgiving in your heart your voice is raised your voice is raised give glory and honor and power unto him Jesus Read with me those words on the screen. We are gathered here in God's house so that God would work by the power of his word and his Holy Spirit so that we would know forgiveness, be refreshed, encouraged, and strengthened for the journey. That is why we are here, not to impress God, but to let God work in our lives. And so we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy Lord God of all creation, you have gifted your world with life. You provided for us, and you call upon us to provide for others as you bless us. You give us, despite our sin, a Savior. You give us your Holy Spirit through your Word to connect us, to create saving faith. We praise you for the way that you continue to watch over us, to bless and guide us day by day in our journey. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. There is no difference. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance. So rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and in great kindness. He relents from doing harm. Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise, shall be His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Are we stuck? There we go. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Will magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt His name I sought the Lord and He answered me. Those who look to him are radiant. And their faces shall never be. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him. And saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. And we are seated to sing.
The first reading, the Old Testament chosen for the feeding and growing of your faith today, is from the God-inspired book of 1 Kings, chapter 19, verses 1 through 8. As the prophet Elijah confronts Ahab and Jezebel, he has a death sentence from the king. See his response and then God's response. You are my hiding place and my shield. I hope in your word. Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, so may the gods do to me and more also if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by this time tomorrow. Then he was afraid and he arose and ran for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a broom tree. And he asked that he might die, saying, It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my father's. And he lay down and slept under a broom tree. And behold, an angel touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was at his head a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. And he ate and drank and lay down again. And the angel of the Lord came again a second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, for the journey is too great for you. And he arose and ate and drank and went in the strength of that food forty days and forty nights to Horeb, the mount of God. This is the word of the Lord. But the word of the Lord endures forever. The New Testament lesson chosen for the feeding and growing of our faith today is from Paul's God-inspired second letter to the Christians in the city of Ephesus, the fourth chapter, beginning at the 17th verse through the second verse of chapter 5. Hear how God guides Paul to continue to challenge and encourage his redeemed believers and guides them in a life of transition. You are my hiding place and my shield. I hope in your word. Now this I say and testify in the Lord, that you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do, in the futility of their minds. They are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, due to their hardness of heart. They have become callous and have given themselves up to sensuality, greedy to practice every kind of impurity. But that is not the way you learned Christ, assuming that you have heard about him and were taught in him, as the truth is in Jesus, to put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds and to put on the new self, created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, having put away falsehood, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and give no opportunity to the devil that the thief no longer steal, but rather let him labor, doing honest work with his own hands, 
so that he may have something to share with anyone in need. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up, as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. This is the word of the Lord. The grass withers and its flower falls away, but the word of the Lord endures forever. Read with me the verse of the month. The Lord redeems the soul of his servants, and none of those who trust in him shall be condemned. God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in times past to the fathers by the prophets, Now as you prepare to hear words from the risen Christ, we rise also to honor these holy words of the Savior. We hear from the Gospel writer John, the sixth chapter, as he is guided to remind the believers that his broken body and shed blood is to be the sacrifice for all nations. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life, Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, whoever believes in me shall never thirst. But I said to you that you have seen me and yet do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me, whoever comes to me I will never cast out. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up at the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him should have eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. So the Jews grumbled about him, because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How does he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not grumble among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except he who is from God. He has seen the Father. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the man in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that the one may eat it and not die. I am the living bread that come down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread... He will live forever, and the bread that is that I will give for my life of the world is my flesh. This is the gospel of the eternal God and Savior Jesus the Christ, who also said, Most assuredly I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has eternal life, and shall not come into judgment, but has passed from death. 
Please be seated. If I could have the young kids come forward for a couple of minutes. Good morning. Do you like my basketball? It's not a basketball. It's not a basketball. Is it a baseball? No. Is it a football? It's a, it's a soccer ball. No. no. It's a globe. Yeah, it's a globe. Well, what does that mean, it's a globe? It's, it's a figure, a shape, reminding us of the world. And the world spins in space because God put it there to do that. And it shows on this globe, this map of the world, all the countries, all the places in the world. And we live right about there. See where my, my finger is? Right about there. That's where we live. Right in there. And all the rest of the world is all over the place. But right there, that's where we are. Now, Jesus, he's in our hearts. Good. But Jesus came down from heaven. He came to the world. And he did all the things he did so that the whole world, all, not just this ball, but that all the people on the world would know that Jesus loves them. And so everything he did, everything he did is so that all those people, you, your family, your friends, even people if you don't like them. Jesus also came for them to show them his love. Jesus died and came alive again. That's why the name of this church is Risen Christ Lutheran Church, to remind us that Jesus, yes, died, but that he rose again. So that everybody who trusts Jesus, no matter where in the world they live, if they know and trust Jesus, they then have heaven in, or Jesus in their heart, and heaven is where they're going to be. So we are going to, sometime in the future, we're going to leave this world, not by rocket ships, 
But we're going to leave this world because Jesus will take us to heaven to be with him, with all Christians. So this is a good place to be. But where we're going to go because of Jesus is much, much better because Jesus did all of that for the life of the whole world. Good job listening. You can go back to your seats. We'll talk more about the world in a little bit. There's a kid's song. He's got the whole in his hands. There you go. Good, good. Grace to you and peace from God our Father, from our Lord, from our Savior, Jesus the Christ. And so we look at Jesus, and we sometimes have to ask that question that we see, uh-oh, I'm dead in the water up here. No, it looks like the batteries are totally dead. Two triple A's. But, so you'll have to follow along. Sorry about that, Steve. The question then is, why is Jesus doing and saying all the things? Why, why, why is Jesus doing and saying all those things that he did? And the next slide answers that, and it says, what's the answer there? Because. Because. He's doing all of this because. He's doing all of this for the life of, we'll talk about that in a minute. Quite a list here. I've got three slides of lists for the life of good people or bad people. Which one? All. Well-intentioned people, rich or poor. Which one? Generous people or Scrooges? Which one? Both. How about those who can take care of their own? Did he die for them? How about those who can't? Even those kinds, yeah. Next slide. Those of European descent? Not especially those, but also those. How about dark-haired or light-haired? Does it matter? No hair. Or no hair? No hair. Yeah. I had to say it. There you go. We've got a model up here demonstrating that. Yes. Those of a certain race. Did he die for a certain race of people? He died for the human race, didn't he? Just that race. He died for Americans, but also those who are not Americans. Some don't believe that. Some say, well, it's just America. Jesus has made us his favored nation. Therefore, we are all that. White or non-white, patriots and rebels, he died for them as well. Next part of the list, traditionalists. He died for them. Modernists, yes. Conservatives, he died for them. But also for the liberals. No matter where you sit on that scale, he died for the other half or the other portion of that list as well. Not just people that agree with you. He died for them all. Pro-choice, pro-life, he died for them all. LGBTQ, he died for them all. Straight, he died for them all. Whether we are woke, as the term is used these days, or part of the establishment is the other side of that, it seems. He died for all. Jesus died for the life. Next slide says for the life of, makes us wonder. He died for the life of the world. 
So again, why is Jesus doing and saying all these things? Well, we see in his driving attitude, it says, John 6, 51. Is it working a little bit now? Oh, the lights are on. Is somebody home? I am the living bread that came down from heaven, he said. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the world is the life, for the life of the world is my flesh. I came down from heaven that people would eat and would live forever. That's his driving force. It's still not advancing, so we'll have you keep working, and I'm just going to put this away. World map. It's not a round one this time. It's a flat one. There we are. He died for all of that. Yes, he did. The next one, it says, For this is my, the will of my Father, that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in him should have, and I will do what with him? Hmm. That's his desire for the life of the world, for the life of me, for the life of you, for the life of all. Je excuse me, Jesus died. He didn't die and give us a blank check and say, no matter what you believe you're in. He said, those who believe in me, those who follow me, they would have. John 3.16, it says, read with me. So love the world. Whoever believes, in order that the world might be saved, through him. We, we love that verse because it is so succinct. It says so much in such few numbers of words that they would have eternal life. For the Son of Man, it says, came to seek and save who? The lost. What does that mean? Say, Chris, open that door. I know you'd be willing, so I asked you. I should make sure there's no alarm on. We'll see. The people who are out there. He died for them too. He didn't just die for the likes of us but also for the likes of them. Those within his church in every place and those also who are not in his church. Now step out beyond the door. See ya. Shut it all the way. Now, the question is, should we let him back in? <laughs> Go let dad in. He's outside. He's outside. When somebody is outside, when somebody is not, come back in, sir. When somebody is not connected to Christ, did he come around? He probably did. Now he's going to be and they're going to be locked out. When somebody is not connected, it is our job to go reach them. We were sending somebody for you. <laughs> I understand. He came to seek and to save the lost. 
And so that's part of our job too, isn't it? As those who know and trust his promise. It is our joyous privilege to go to reach to them, to others. Even if we find them a little bit different. Even if they don't look and sound and act just like you. Jesus died for them too, didn't he? And he wants us to bring that message to them, to the lost also. Not go up and say, hey, I'm going to heaven and you're a loser. Want to be on my team? Not to have that attitude. But to humbly approach others with the truth of God's word. Yes, God's law that says you are a sinner just like I am. But Jesus loves you and died for you, so surrender your heart. Let God's Holy Spirit work in you to create saving faith and then to sustain that saving faith. That's our joyous privilege. John 6, 38, it says, For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. Jesus said, I came to do what the Father said and promised from the beginning. To seek to save the lost, to die for, to live for, and then to die for, and to rise again for the life of the world. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly, says Jesus. Hmm. Jesus, the bread of life. Jesus, the bread of life, who says, I am that bread. He came and he comes through Holy Communion. He gives us his Spirit-powered Word. He sent the Holy Spirit to create faith and he established his Holy Church. And he will come again for the life of the world. He came 2,000 years ago, but he continues to come to us as we have Holy Communion in a little bit. That is Jesus coming to us again through bread and wine, by the word making it so. As we hear his holy word, the Holy Spirit accompanies that word to get past these things, to get past this thing, to get to here, creating, sustaining, saving faith, the Holy Spirit and his church. The job of his church is to be not about ourselves. The job of his church is to go beyond the walls. Yes, to gather for feeding the faith and for fellowship, but to go beyond the walls of his church. To reach others those three pages of people types, and much more than that. To reach them all, to reach everybody. Somebody gave you the gospel. Somebody showed you Jesus' love. That was a bad idea. Because now you're part of his church. Ugh. I'm kidding. But there might be people that say, I really wish you wouldn't have brought so-and-so into your church, God. I really wish you wouldn't bring people like them to your church because, well, they're different. They like different music. They're too quiet or they're too loud. They're too young, they're too old. They're this or they're that. And we have all kinds of definitions and we say, 
Did, did you really have to? Yes. Because he died for you and he died for them. The old expression that is quite cliche nowadays is, is, is when you're pointing at somebody, there's other fingers pointing back at you. But also, take your hand like this, take your thumb, and do, your, do like this, point your thumb at yourself. The other ones are pointing out. He wants us to be living that faith, but also, right? sharing that faith beyond just this showing that faith well well pastor i'm really not the kind of person that's going to go banging on doors and say if you were to die today where are you going and if they say well i think heaven well why do you believe that i think you're wrong some of you are cut out for that kind of door-to-door -door work. Others have a hard time answering the door when, when you get a package that you ordered. But we all can live our faith. We can share our faith in how we live. And as we live our faith and show our faith in how we live, even if it's not bold, it's just our humble faith. People might notice. Why in the world are you so strange? Maybe somebody said something to you that, if, that would be very offensive. And everybody that you work with said, Man, I would have just knocked that guy out. And you just let it go off your back like water on a duck's back. You're scared to respond because you don't need to. It won't do any good to come back at that person and say, well, Oh, yeah? So you let it go. Why are you always so willing to forgive? Why are you always so willing to not smack somebody that needs smacking? Well, because I've been forgiven a lot. I'm a mess. You may not know that, but I'm a mess. And Jesus died for me, and he says, here, come to me. So I have been forgiven much. Who am I to say that so-and-so, because he or she did or said, needs to be hit with a chair or something like that? And so maybe in how we live our lives, humbly, joyously, with graciousness and gratitude, we get noticed. And they see this because we know and trust Jesus Christ. And then all of a sudden, without banging on doors of strangers, we may have reached somebody and they say, well, I wish I could be more like you. And maybe we invite them to church or to sit down and pray together. And over the course of time, maybe that person then is brought to faith in Jesus Christ. And their friends look at them and say, well, what got into you? Are you on some new medication? Did you have a lobotomy of some sort? Because we know you sure needed one. Well, no. What got into me is Jesus Christ. So I'm not that crazy hothead anymore. Because I know that my Redeemer lives. We sang that a little bit ago, didn't we? Because Jesus Christ has changed my life, my eternity. 
Next slide says, The angel of the Lord came again a second time and touched Elijah when he was, he ran away. He had been brutally honest with King Ahab and Jezebel for their awful way of living. And he had seen to it that a bunch of those false prophets were put to death because of their way of living and teaching. So now they want to have him killed, so he packs up and leaves. Goes out in the desert and hides in a cave. And the angel is sent to him and feeds him. And he says, arise and eat, for the journey is too great for you. To be strengthened. He fled to get away from all of that. But then God took that opportunity to, to strengthen him, to feed him, that he could get back in there and keep on doing what he was doing, strengthened by God. And that's why we have church. That's why we gather for worship. That's why we have the Feast of Holy Communion, to feed, to strengthen that faith for the journey. Because we live in a world that doesn't like the truth of Jesus Christ. It simply doesn't. Parts of it do, yes. You probably have neighbors who are in church right now. You probably have neighbors who laugh at you when you get up and go to church on a Sunday morning. That small-minded so-and-so. But the world is in opposition to you. Most of the world, if Jesus came right now, most of the world would go to hell. Because they don't believe. That's kind of a hard concept to wrap your head around. But, but of all the people living in the world right now, if he were to come right now for judgment, most of them would go to hell. Well, that's not good. No, it's not. But it's true. He came for the life of the world. And it's the job then, it's the joyous privilege of his church, of his people, to see to it that the world is delivered from themselves and delivered to Jesus the Christ that they, that we, would look to the cross of Christ, that the world would look to the cross, that the world would see Jesus. And that would be the center then of their axis, revolving then around his truth, first and foremost, for the life of the world. Jesus died for the life of do this again put your hands out for the life of that person Jesus died for the life of those people Jesus died here oh, all of them amen amen alleluia amen and again, read with me. The Lord redeems the soul of his servants, and none of those who trust in him shall be condemned. Simple truth in those words. Let's speak words that are also simple words of truth. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, and he ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We sing our offertory hymn, Jesus, lover of my soul.
Jesus, lover of my soul, Jesus, I will never let you go. Taking me from the miry clay, from the power of rock, and now I know I know. I love you, I need you, and though my world may fall, I'll never let you go. My Savior, my closest friend. Jesus, lover of my soul, Jesus, I will never let you go. You've taken me from the miry clay, set my feet upon the rock, and now I know I love you, I need you. Though my world will fall, I'll never let you go. My Savior, my closest friend, I will worship you until the very end. Jesus, lover of my soul, Jesus, I will never let you go. Taken me from the miry clay, set my feet upon the rock, and now I know I love you, I need you. Though my world may fall, I'll never let you go. My Savior, my closest friend. And we pray. Indeed, lover of my soul, you died that my soul would be redeemed. You died for the life of the world. And so I praise you that you, Father, Son, and Spirit, continue to love even the brokenness of humanity, even the fallenness, even the, the arrogance, the boldness of sin. You love us even though you hate that sin. And you send your Holy Spirit through your word to reach into those hearts, even our hearts, to create and to sustain, to feed and to grow that faith that it would thrive, that our faith would flourish, that even others through our lives would also come to know and trust your glorious and gracious promise. For your church, grant us that understanding that it's not just within these walls, but beyond these walls, these borders, that we, each one of us, are to reach in how we live. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Heavenly Father, we praise you for risen Christ, Lutheran Church, for the many years we have served as your church in this place. As we are at about almost 30 years of the old part of this building that it was built, we praise you for the many servants over the years, for the many hearts brought to faith. We rejoice in that gift as we go forward from one day to the next, knowing that eternity is ours, 
because of Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, there were many people groups mentioned in the early part of the sermon. Help us to reach in all of those areas, not exclusive to any, but in all of those areas, with your true law and your true gospel. And may they be reached by that Holy Spirit, not just by our words. Lord, in your mercy. We ask your blessings for David, for Sandra, for Roger and for J.L., for Melinda and Wendy, for Homer, for Jerinia, for Duane and Marcella and Ruth. Heal them, refresh them, and strengthen them by your grace each new day. For John Besevich, for Jean and Janita Baumgartner, for Ed Berg, Lord, look in their lives. You know them better than they know themselves. Lead, guide, and bless them from this day forward. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. See into our hearts. See beyond ourselves that we would live beyond ourselves and lift the burdens of our lives. Lord, in your mercy, prepare us to receive the feast even the very body and blood of Christ. And hear us as we pray the prayer Jesus taught as he taught us to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Seek the Lord in his strength. Seek his presence continually. You were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things like silver or gold. The cup of blessing that we bless. The bread that we break. The Apostle Paul said, If I receive from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and he said, This is my body which is given for you. He said, Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is that new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Again, we hear those words, Arise and eat, for the journey is too great for you. And we are seated to follow the ushers and their guidance for the feast. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in Him shall have eternal life. And I will raise Him up on the last day. And I will raise Him up 
on the last day and I will raise him up on the last day Welcome to the Lord's table Take and eat the body of Christ for the forgiveness of all of your sins. The body of Christ. Jesus loves you today and every day. And now may the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you from this day forward to life everlasting. Depart in his peace and live in his joy. Amen. And now may the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you from this day forward to life everlasting. Depart in his peace and live in his joy. Amen.
And we rise to sing. Father, you've given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days on this journey and on the day of his coming that we may together with all your saints celebrate that marriage feast of the Lamb in his eternal kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. Look upon you with favor and grant to you his peace. Amen. The Lord redeems the soul of his servants, and none of those who trust in him shall be condemned, and none of those who trust in him shall be condemned. 
Are there any announcements from the folks scattered out in the seats? Yes. We have some folks who are first time with us. It's good to have you here with us today. So we praise God for your gathering with us in his holy house. These are some of the folks of Risen Christ Lutheran Church. I, I want to mention that you received, most of you last week, one of these frontline daily prayer ministry, talking about a, a new ministry perspective where we are going to pray for certain areas of ministry. Those who've said yes to pray for that every day will give you a new update each week to pray for two or three or at the most four items of ministry coming up in, in the short future at that point. And there are, in the entryway, there are some uh, sign-up sheets if you want to be part of that and turn those back in either through the offering plate or give them to me so we can get that list starting in a couple of weeks. And as I mentioned last week, you see on the back the list of prayers and it says congregation families. We will every week, as I said, list the next three families alphabetical in our, in our fellowship. And so we have this week Pesevich, Baumgartner, and Berg. Not because they've said we need to pray for me, but because we need to pray for all of the people of God on a regular basis. So at some point, you will be part of that list as well. Um, Celeste is taking a class that's going to change her office hours schedule to starting this week. Her office hours are Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday from 8.30 to 11.30. So please realize she's not in on Mondays starting this week. We'll be in Fridays instead. Any other announcements? Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 